So this day usually means a marathon of legislation being deliber uh, deliberated in each respective chamber. Why is that day today? Well, because lawmakers are hoping to get done by the end of this month at the latest, meaning we likely won't see what we saw last year with the longest session in history. So what does an abundant agenda look like? Well, on the House side, that list includes 39 bills and concurrent resolutions, just those who have made it through committee. Those that haven't made it through committee still kind of in a holding pattern. Think of things like the repeal of the grocery tax or the gas bill. Those are still on hold. But what about what was on the agenda? By our count, there are currently five bills bouncing around the state house that would either tighten voting qualifications or restrict the ease and accessibility of voting in Idaho. From what's acceptable as a form of ID to the number of absentee ballots one can carry to where someone could drop off said absentee ballots. House Bill 693 simply would prohibit the use of drop-off boxes or similar drop-off locations to collect absentee ballots. And it would be that simple. Yes, it would certainly not simplify the voting process for a lot of Idahoans, though. Ballot drop boxes became a big thing during the 2020 election year, especially in the May primary when polling places were closed because of the spreading COVID pandemic. All votes in that election, in the primary election, were done by absentee. But their popularity of these boxes and absentee ballots continued into the November general election. For example, in Ada County, more voters voted by absentee ballot for president than in person on election day, according to election records. That included mail-in ballots, drop box ballots, and those who just walked them into the county clerk's office. But House Bill 693, as Representative Giddings said, would ban election drop boxes for absentee voters across the state. Drop boxes, she said, aren't really necessary anymore. Getting said, allowing those drop boxes, even during an emergency declaration, goes against election laws already in place with regard to absentee ballots. She quoted Idaho Code 34-1005. It says, the return envelope shall be mailed or delivered to the officer who issued the same. That's what I want to draw your attention to. The intent for these absentee ballots were to be for people who were out of the state, out of the country, our military service members. And so the guidance was for it to be mailed or delivered. Taking your ballot to another location and dropping it off somewhere where there's not an individual, where there's not security, does not count as mailed or delivered to the officer who issued the same. So I would argue that drop boxes are currently operating outside of the scope of the law. Well, that brought up a few questions about the boxes in general, like from representatives John Gannon from Boise and Megan Blanksma from Hemet, who asked, what's the difference between a ballot drop off box and a normal blue post office drop off box? Most importantly, what is the problem here? Where is the problem with drop boxes? For 40 years, I, well, I've, I've lived on the Boise bench for 40 years, and for 40 years there's been a mailbox on Latos Street. And I have dropped off checks frequently over the 40 years, I don't know, maybe 50 or 100 into the mailbox. And it goes out in the mail. In fact, we have mail drop boxes all over Boise. For those of you who haven't been to a rural, rural post office, they aren't manned the whole time. So when you drop it off, you are dropping it off in a drop-off box. That's what happens. It's a little blue thing, sits right outside the post office, and you drop that in there. Representative Blanksma also pointed out how efficient these drop boxes were for rural voters. It gave them options without having to rely on the questionable U.S. Postal Service. Removing that option might make it more difficult for voters in districts like hers, she said, to which a couple of representatives responded this way. Not sure how to say this, but sometimes convenience isn't the best option. We're trying to make it into almost a frivolous process. You just drive by and put your ballot in a box. I, I think it, it doesn't need to be convenient. It needs to be important. It needs to be a moment when you really stop and think about things. And stop and think about things like maybe when you can stop and sit down at your kitchen table and review the levies, the initiatives, the judges and candidates at your convenience and then really take the time to think about things, then maybe fill out that ballot and take it to a secure drop box. 
which brought up the question of the security of these drop boxes and overall election integrity. Drop boxes um, could be ripe for for tampering or fraud or what, whatever else the imagination can come up with. We shouldn't have to wait for an election to get wrecked before we say, oh, we need to fix the process. And the drop boxes are an opportunity for wrecking an election. I know there's uh, federal laws and it's a felony to tamper with a U.S. postal box. Are there similar laws um, against tampering with an absentee ballot drop box? Well, Nate didn't know the answer to that question, but what we do know is that there wasn't any incidents of tampering or vandalism or evidence of fraud in relation to any ballot drop boxes in Idaho. However, in case there was some question, Representative Blanksmith found the answer to Nate's question right there in Idaho Code 1823-06. What you would, heard her, would have heard her say is illegal voting or interference with election. It covers things like anyone who votes or isn't supposed to votes more than once or changes. There is a, uh, there's a sound bite in there, I should say. There is a part of that that says there's an election law. So illegal voting or interference with elections, it covers things like anyone who votes isn't supposed to vote. The middle of this paragraph in 1813-06, this one right here, 1823-06, excuse me. The part where it says every person with intent to change the result of such an election or carries away or destroys or attempts to carry away or destroy any poll list or ballot or ballot box for the purpose of breaking up or invalidating such election or willfully detains, mutilates or destroys any election returns as to prevent such election or canvas from being fairly held and lawfully conducted. Yeah, it says all that right there. It says is guilty of a felony. It makes it a felony to tamper. It's right there. So if anybody touches a drop box, touches a ballot, attempts to interfere with the election, it's already a felony. This is where we get the penalty. It is. And Idaho Code 1823-16 also deals specifically with tampering with ballots, which is also a felony with at least a year in prison. So there is already a law making it illegal to tamper, change, damage, destroy a ballot, including those inside a ballot drop box. But now, like a lot of things we discovered during the pandemic, that made life more convenient and more accessible for Idahoans like those boxes. Well, now those boxes are now one step closer to being banned from being used ever again in Idaho. The bill passed 37-33 and now goes to the Senate.